I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we have a lesson with our golden girl Naisha. We'll discuss Quad Theorem with some examples. Let us try to explore the Quad Theorem. We are going to prove it and see how Pythagorean Theorem can help us solve many related questions. Our approach engaging minds is really connecting the learnings. As you will see in this video, we'll connect with polynomials, Pythagorean theorem, and circles while solving the questions. Join Anil Kumar classes, gain confidence, and get ready for future. We develop mathematical and social skills for excellent performance of our students. The gift of education. I can be part of your success story, build strong foundation, and show a bright future. Join Anil Kumar classes. Send an email on the address given here. Let us now enjoy the lesson with the golden girl, Naisha. Hi, Naisha. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Very good, very good. So tell me, how is it going about your sports? Yes, uh, recently I've gone for volleyball state level selections and there I got selected in it. And yes. so now I'm for math, for getting gold in math also as well as I'm getting it in sports. Very good. So the golden girl in archery now has joined volleyball team for the state. And she definitely wants a gold in mathematics. We will do it for you. Now, what do you want to learn today? Circle chapter. It's very tough. And circle chapter. Okay. Very good. We will begin the circle chapter. Can you share what exactly you want to learn? So I'll teach you the concept. And then from there, we will uh, see how you can attempt your questions. Okay? Okay. I'll you share. share the questions so that I know exactly what you want to learn. Okay? Yes. Can you see the screen? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So you're learning about the chords and, okay, in the circle. Fine, fine. Yes. Okay, great. Good. Can you please read the question? Oh, yes, just a second. In a circle with center P called EB is drawn of length 13 centimeter, segment PQ is on segment PQ is on the word AB, then find length QB. Okay. So, let me teach you the concept and then you should be in a position to answer your own question. That is the whole idea. Is that okay? Yes. So, you yes. can stop sharing the screen. I will teach you the concept and I will share my screen with my lesson. Okay. Yes. So, <clears throat> circle is a very important chapter and when we teach students this chapter on circle, there are uh, many theorems on this. Based on those theorems and rules, we have so many questions. And I think this is one of the most uh, important and sometimes difficult chapter for a middle school student like you or anybody globally, right? It is a very difficult chapter. So as you can see, we have diagrams based on different uh, theorems of uh, circle theorems, we call them collectively. But as I saw, you only want to know about one specific example. So, uh, which one is that which you want is basically you are interested in this portion, correct? Yes. So, that was your data. So, here what we have is from the center row, we are drawing a line which is perpendicular to a chord AB. Right. So whenever you draw this chord on the chord, it will always bisect AB. So, so we have a theorem for this. So it is good to understand the concept. Once you understand the concept, you can easily solve all the questions based on that. Correct. So let me first prove the theorem to you so that you understand. We call it chord theorem. Okay. So as I was saying, this is called chord theorem. What is a chord? Chord theorem. Yeah. So, what is the 
of circle, if you take any two points on the circle and join them, it becomes a chord. Okay? Yes. That is a chord. Now, this chord, if it goes through the center, it is also called diameter. Because, again, diameter is joining the two points on the circumference, right? Yes. So, diameter is the longest chord. So, you should understand that part also. All other chords are smaller than the diameter. Now, yes. what are we doing? We are drawing a perpendicular OM. So, OM is the perpendicular from the center of the circle O to the chord AB. So, when this is a perpendicular, Definitely, they should make 90 degrees as shown here, right? Yes. Now we need to prove that BM equals to MA. So we have to prove that this BM is equal to MA. That is, this perpendicular OM divides the chord, rather, it is a perpendicular bisector, right? So we have to prove that OM is a right bisector. So, very easy to prove. How will you prove? See, simple construction. Join the center with the point B and with A. Now, when you join that, in that case, OB and OA are equal because they are radius of the circle, right? Yes. So, you have a radius, you have a common side, and you have right angle theorem. You understand? Right angle, let's yeah. Using that theorem, you can say that these two triangles are congruent, correct? Yes. If the triangles are congruent, then their corresponding sides are equal, correct? Okay. And therefore, BM is equal to MA. So that is what we have written here in the proof, in short. Correct? So join OA and OB. So when you join OA and OB, that is the radius, right? And then OA yes. equals to OB. It is the radii of the circle. Triangle OAM and triangle OMB are congruent, right? That's a symbol for congruent, right? These two triangles are congruent. Hypotenuse, let theorem which you have learned. And therefore, we prove that BM equals to MA, right? So in congruent triangles, all these sides will be, corresponding sides will be equal. Uh, just a second, just a second. Hypotenuse, like, like theorem is triangle OMA uh, is congruent to triangle OMB, right? Yes, right. Because this, okay. I'm enlarging this diagram, right? Yes. So in this triangle, we know this is, these are right angle triangles, correct? Yes. So we have a common side, hypotenuse, and this is one leg, and this hypotenuse is equal because they are radius, correct? So, yes. hypotenuse leg theorem. Obviously, when two sides are equal, the third will also be equal, right? Equal. You can actually do it with Pythagorean theorem also. But you have learned congruent triangles, hypotenuse leg theorem. That is where we use it and we say, well, these two triangles are congruent. And therefore, the side BM is equal to MA. Is that okay? Now? Yes. Now, there is a related theorem. That is to say, if I draw a right bisector of a chord, let us say I have another chord. Okay. In that case, if I draw a right bisector of the chord, that means something going through the center and perpendicular, it will always go through the center. Do you understand? Yes. The right bisector of a chord will always go through the center. And this is also a method of finding center of a circle. You get the idea? So, if I have a circle as shown here, I could draw two chords and their right bisectors, and wherever these right bisectors intersect, that is going to be the center. You get the idea? So, yes. that is how we do uh, or understand the concept. Now, let's get back to this question. Uh, similar to what you have, uh, what I will do here is that <clears throat> let's create our question now. So let us say we have or a shall I share the textbook. Yeah, no, no, wait, wait, wait. We'll, we'll solve sample examples, right? So that you understand how to solve it, right? So let us say now if I have a chord here and we have a center here, 
right? And if I say that the length of the chord is, let us say this length of the chord is, uh, uh, let us say it is 16 centimeters. Let us say this is 16 centimeters, right? And if I know that the right bisector over here, the distance from center O to the chord AB is, let us say, 12 centimeters. Let us say 6 centimeters. Okay? In that case, can you find the radius of the circle? Triangle. Radius will be this, right? Yes. So what is the radius equals to tell me? It will be 8 centimeters. No. When you have a chord bisected, in that case, each side will be equal. So each side will be 8 centimeters, correct? So 8 and yeah. 6. What is the radius? This is right angle triangle. So radius will be 8 square plus 6 square. You know Pythagorean theorem? That is radius square, right? Yes. Radius so, square. Okay. 64 plus 36, which is 100, right? So radius yes. is square root of 100. So I was trying to take some values which are easy to work with. So we get radius of 10 centimeters. Do you understand this question now? Yes. So if I give you the chord length and the distance of the chord from the center, in that case, you can find the radius, right? Okay. Right? If I change the equation, that is to say, I give you the radius. We could have so many questions based on this, right? Yes. Same diagram. Now I'm saying that the the radius is 10 centimeters. And the distance is 5 centimeters. Find the length A to B. Find AB. How will you do it? Find AB. Yeah, length of the chord. Sixteen centimeter. We already know that. No, no. I change the distance from O to M or to five. So how will you do it? You can apply the ten final plus five. Find AM, right? Ten plus five. No, no. Five over into so AM square will be radius square minus five square. Okay. Apply the Pythagorean theorem first. Find the distance A to M, right? So, which is how much? 100 minus 100 70. minus 25. 25, which is 75, correct? Yes. So AM is equal to square root of 75. Which could be okay. 25 into 3, so 5 square root 3. How much is A to B? A to B is double of AM, right? 2 times AM. So, which is 2 times 5 square root 3. Which is 10 square root 3 centimeters. Do you understand how we did it? I'm um, not from the part 75 square. Okay. So, first what we did? We were given the radius and the distance from the center to the chord. We use the right angle triangle O A M. This is a right angle triangle, okay? So, in this yes. right angle triangle, we find A M using Pythagorean theorem, right? Yes. Once you find A to M, we know that A M is same as M, B, right? Both are equal? Yes. This is chord theorem. Both are equal. Since both are equal, A to M will be 2 times A, A to B 
will be two times a m, right? Because m, a, and m, b are equal? Yes. So we multiply this value, 5 square root 3, by 2 to get this answer. Do you understand how I reduce 75 to 5 square root 3? I'll show you that part. So why I get it. So we have square root of 75. You understand this, right? Yes. 75 can be written as 25 times 3, right? Okay. What is square root of 25? 5. 5. So that is how I reduce this. You get the idea? So you should okay. not work with radicals, the square root specially. That is how you work. Do you get the idea? Do you see how we, we can solve such questions? Yes. Very. So now, I think that should help you to answer your question. So let's get back to your question now and uh, see if you can answer. That would be very good. So I, I'll stop sharing. You can now share your screen. <clears throat> Share, share now. Yeah, you share your screen and solve your question yourself. Is that okay? Yes, okay. that is how you have to learn and solve all the questions in your book. So, in your question, let's read the question. In a circle, the center P called AB is drawn of length 13 centimeters. So, AB is 13. So, from here to here, oh, go back to your So, let me annotate then I can do that. Yes. So now we are given that A to B is 13, right? 13. So let me change the color. So this A to B is 13. So this is 13. Yes. Centimeter. In this circle, chord length is 13 centimeter. Segment PQ is perpendicular. So perpendicular means? Like this, and and we know that these two sides will be equal, correct? Equal. Between half is seven and six and a half, right? So each yes. length is six point five. Correct. Yes. Then find Q to B. Q to B. So Q to B is half of thirteen, correct? Yes. Q to B is half of AB, which is half of thirteen, correct? Yes. Which is 6.5. Easy. And the okay. unit are centimeters. Is it clear how we should do it? Yes. And because of chord sec theorem, right? This yes. We learned just now. Is that clear to you? Yes, completely. Right. So I will erase this. Yes. Can you share the next question? Yeah, let's yeah, let's see the diagram. We'll do it now. Read the question, please. We will solve. You will solve. Read the question. Okay. The radius of a circle with center O is 25 centimeters. Correct. Find the distance of a chord from the center if the length of the chord is 48 centimeters. So you have to find OP, right? That is what you need to find. And C D is given to you as 48 centimeter. Then what is P to D? These P are to half. D is 25. P to D is half of 48. Yes. Which is 24. And we know this is 24. And O to D is 25. So OP is how much? We'll apply the Pythagorean theorem, right? So OP yes. is O to B is shorter side. So longer side 25 square minus 24 square, right? Yes. So OP is square root of 5. 5 square minus 24 square. You can use calculator and find this answer, right? You know factory? You can also use factory. You understand? You remember what is A square minus B square equals to? You learned it polynomial? A, plus, a, B a, times a plus B. A plus B times it. Now here 25 square minus 24 square will be what? Let's see how we can simplify. 25 plus 24 times 25 minus 24. See, apply what you've learned. 25 minus 24 is 1. And what is 24 plus 25? 49. Do you see this? Yes. Square root of 49 is 7. See how without calculator, easily we found the value 7. You get the idea? Yes. You understand. Because you learned previous units about polynomials. So you could factor this and find your exact answer as 7. Perfect? 
So we have learned so many things with this example. Of course, we are working on the chord and circle, but we are reviewing the and the polynomials, correct? Yes. You can share the next question and let us look into that. Oh, can you just do it that I want to take a screenshot? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, you can. Yes, yes, yes. Why not? Please. Yes, done. Okay, so clear. You can go to the next question now. I think it's on the next page. See, they got seven answers. Okay, next question number three. Correct. Continue, continue. Read the question. Stop, stop. We will solve our way. Read the question. Yes. O is the center of the circle. Find the length of the radius. If the chord of length 24 centimeter is at a distance of 9 centimeter from the center of the circle. Correct. Easy. Can you tell me how will you do it? Uh, he find 9 squared plus 24 squared. So 24, half is 12, right? So this side will be 12 centimeter and that is also 12 centimeter. Because yes. the chord is divided into two equal parts, correct? Let's write the center point as M. In that case, we know MB is equal to half of 24. This is your first step, right? Which is yes. centimeters. Now we have a right triangle, right? We have a right triangle. And in this right triangle, we'll apply the Pythagorean theorem, right? And so we need to find what? Find the length of the radius. So radius will be R square will be 9 square plus mb square, right? Yes. So, mb is 12. So, it is 9 square plus 12 square. 12 square. And calculate, right? So, r will be square root of 9 square plus 12 square, correct? Yes. And calculate, find the answer, 81 plus 144, right? 81 plus 144. Yeah, and then square root, correct? 225. Square root 225 is 25, right? 25. No, no, no. Square root 25 is? Sorry? Square root 225 is? 225 square. Mm. Correct. So you get the answer as R is 15 centimeters. Correct? Yes. You understand all these steps? Yes. Easy to do, right? So first thing, you have this part and the right bisector. Divide into two equal parts. So the length of the chord 24 is divided into two equal parts, 12 each, right? Then we look into yes. one triangle, right? So we look into this triangle, any one triangle you can see, and that is a right angle triangle. Apply the Pythagorean theorem and solve, right? Yes. So two theorems are applied. One is the chord. Cent circle chord theorem and the other one is Pythagorean theorem. Okay, great. So go to the next question, please. Yes. Uh, but I have a question now. Yes. Here O to the right angle triangle, we took it M. But uh, if in school I added just M, what will happen if I cut my mask? No, no. Why? You, for, you can label this point anything. Your solution says P. You can write P. Point but if it is not given anything. You have to write anything. You can write A, B, C, D, whatever. I mean, not A, B, but something else. Doesn't matter. Oh. These are your points, right? You could just label them. So we call labeling. So you can say, well, let this point be M. I'm saying M because M is a midpoint, right? So A, B, midpoint M. Is it easy for you? Since it is a midpoint, these two sides are equal, each are 12 each. Do you see that? Yes. And now we have a right triangle where I know 9 is one side, the other side is 12, and this will be 9 square plus 12 square square root. Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Yeah, next question. Yes. Next, next page. <laughs> So there are only five questions here, so we can quickly finish this exercise. Okay, now this is another question. Can you please read the question? 
Yes, the diameter PQ and RS of the circle with center C are perpendicular to each other at C. State Y arc PC and yeah. arc PS and arc SQ are congruent. Write the other arcs which are congruent to arc PS. Arc PS, right? So this arc. Yes. Now, length of the arc in a circle really depends on the angle subscribed. Do you see this angle? Yes. So it is all these lengths are equal since they have the same angle of 90 degrees. You understand? Yes. So therefore, the arcs which will make the same angle will be of same length. Correct? So that is the answer. So as you can read the answer. As we know that according to the theorem of circle, two arcs are congruent if their central angle are congruent, right? So central yes. angle is 90 for each, correct? And therefore, yes. all the four arcs are congruent. Is that clear to you? Okay. Next question, please. In the adjoining figure O, is the center of the circle whose diameter is an n. Measure, measures of some central angles are given in the figure. Hence, find the following. Very First, measure angle EOB and measure angle COD. Very So, you are given different uh, these angles. angles in this circle. Total angle yes. is 60 degrees, right? Total angle is 360 degrees, correct? Yes. So when total is 360 degrees, now it also says in the adjoining figure, O is the center of the circle whose diameter is Mn. Measure of some central angles are given, right? So this is the diameter. So how much is this angle? 180 minus angle 30. A, O, B will be equal to 180 degrees. Because this is 180 degrees, correct? Yes. Minus 100, minus 35. Minus 100, minus 35. So 80 minus 35 is how much? 180 minus this is 80. 80 minus 35, 45 degrees, correct? So we get these angles as 45 degrees. Okay. This side also, 100, same. 35. Yeah, same. In this case, it is same. It could be different, right? Because they have shown it like this. So, those angles are 45, right? Now, since the yes. angles are 45, so we found the measurement of these angles as equal to 45 degrees, correct? Yes. Show that the arc AB and arc CD are congruent. Since the angles are same, so same central angle you like. Same central angle. Okay. Subtended, use the word subtended. Same central angle, subtended. What is the meaning of subtended? Makes, make by the arc. Arc makes the same angle at the center. Subtended makes. Makes, right? Or that arc makes that angle at the center. Is it okay? Show that yes. the quad AB is equal to quad BD. So this quad will also be equal to the quad AB because that is also a theorem, right? So you know if the if the uh, angles are same, then the quad length will also be for this particular case will be same, right? So okay, let's go yes. chapter in your book. Continue. Next page. It's over. So they measured, see, they found the angle, 45 degrees, correct? Just as we calculated, correct? Read. Yes. What are the reasons given? Read. It is good to read because you have to write similar way. Write down. Yes. Arc A, B is equal to arc C, D because the arcs are of equal measure, 45 degree each angle and equal angle made equal sector. Okay, and next one with the chord. 
chord A B is going to chord C D because corresponding chords of congruent arcs are congruent. Right. So if arcs are congruent, then the chords are also congruent, right? And here yes. the arc is congruent. Why? Because each because of equal measure of 45 degrees central angle we should write. Each angle, angle is at the center, right? So it is good to put this word central angle. Right? Otherwise, perfectly fine. You understand? So, in any circle, this chord length is equal. If this angle is equal, right? Both angles are theta. In that case, chords are same and the arcs yes. are also same. Do you understand? Arcs are also same. Same arc, same chords. Correct? So they are all related. Perfect. Make sense? Because yes. you know it is the same radius also. These are congruent triangles. So from the congruent triangles, you can make it S A S. You see S A S? Yes. Side, angle side. Side, angle side. Congruent triangles to side will be equal. So if the angle is same at the center, then the chord length will also be same. Correct? Last question. Yes. Now we are almost at the end. Can we see? What is the next question? No question, sir. Oh, okay, very good. So we will end our class here today. And uh, we can stop sharing. Perfect, perfect. Now tell me, what did you learn today? Uh, yes. How to apply theorems in a circle. And then uh, how to... Uh, uh, understand which theorem should be applied and how, and uh, previous formulas can be used in uh, uh, another chapters also. You have to connect your learning. So, what we learn is connect your learnings. In yes. polynomials, we learn that a square minus b square can be written as a plus b times a minus b. We could use this for fast calculations. We calculated 25 square minus 24 square very easily, right? So, yes. and then we learned, we also review Pythagorean hypotenuse leg theorem, right? So, if we have right triangles, right angle triangles, then you need only two sides and another, another angle for them to be congruent. If hypotenuse and one leg of the two triangles is congruent, then the triangles are congruent. We use this theorem to also prove the circle chord theorem. If we have a right bisector of a chord, in that case, there are two things. One, right bisector of the chord will always go through the center. And if from the center, we drop a perpendicular on the chord, it will divide the chord into two equal parts, right? It will bisect it. So basically, the chord theorem is that the if you join the center, to, uh, perpendicular to the chord, then the chord will be divided to equal parts. And corollary is that the right bisector of the chord will always go through the center. We also learn that if the in the same triangle, if we have same central angle, then the arcs and the segments are also congruent. Correct? Yes. So with this, we'll end the class. So we'll continue from here next time. Try to do as many questions from your book as possible. If there is a difficulty, let me know. Okay? Yes. Okay, then. Thanks. Bye. All the best. Thank you.